Hello and welcome to a special edition of Insert Coin. I'm Tim. Hello, Chris. Hello. And we're going to go through an enemy skill guide for Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yes. So the first enemy skill you can get is Matra Magic. Uh, it can be found just outside of Midgar. So as soon as you leave Midgar in the game, you can look out for this move. Uh, you should have the enemy skill material by this point. Uh, it can be learned from the Bull Motor or Death Machine and Custom Sweeper. So there's quite a few creatures that have it. Uh, it's a non-elemental attack that damages all enemies. Next is L4 Suicide, learned from, learned from moves or trick plays. We got it in the Grasslands area just outside the Chocobo Ranch. And basically it casts mini and it quits your damage on monsters with a multiple level of 4. Just gotta wait for the mob to cast on you and bam. The next enemy skill is Chocobuckle. Uh, it's learned around the Chocobo Ranch area. You'll need to have the Chocobo Law Materia and you'll also need to have a Mimic Green and have the enemy skill L4 Suicide. Uh, once you've encountered your Chocobo, you'll need to use the Mimic Green on the Chocobo, and this will keep it distracted. You'll then be able to cast the L4 Suicide uh, enemy skill, and the Chocobo will retaliate with the move Chocobockle, allowing you to learn it. So it's a lot to do to get hold of this move, which then apparently does hardly any damage and doesn't really seem to have any special ability. Um, if you have any idea, the reason why you would need this, then please feel free to comment on the video and let us know. I, I can't see any perk to this move at all. It's probably the worst enemy skill in the game. Fat Canary! Next is Flamethrower. We got it from a dragon up in the Mithril Mines. Or you can also get it from Mount Nibble. You've just got to wait for the mob to cast it on you. It's pretty much what it does. It ca causes medium fire damage to a simple opponent. It's pretty decent, but there are other better. Then the next one is Laser. Uh, you get it in the Coral Prison just after the section in the Gold Saucer. Um, essentially what this does is it actually halves the opponent's HP, a bit like Demi, but it doesn't work on most people. A lot of people are immune to it, so you can probably afford to miss this one. Next we have Big Guard, one of the most important enemy skills in the game. Make sure you grab this one from the Beach Plugs in the Coral Area Shoreline. This adds Barrier, Magic Barrier and Haste to every ally. It is incredibly useful. What you need to do is cast Manipulate on the enemy to make sure they cast it on you. Uh, the next one is Aqualung, uh, and that's also found near the Coral Prison area. Um, around Chocobo Tracks or Ancient Capital uh, in the Crash Kalinka. So there's quite a few things that do this. Um, essentially it's just a water-based attack which damages all opponents. So it's quite good for an, an all attack. Next we have White Wind, learned from the Zemzalet or the Wind Wing, either in the Junion area or Whirlwind Maze. What this does is cures all status ailments on everyone in your party and heals for however much health you currently have. To get this, what you need to do is manipulate the enemy so it casts on yourself. Then we've got uh, Beta. Uh, it's good if you can get it early on, but it's very hard to get. You get it for the Midgar Zolan in the marsh area near the uh, Chocobo farm. Now this boss is pretty tough at that stage in the game, uh, but there are ways to get it quite early on. It's a fire damage on all attacks, so depending on when you get it, it can be really devastating. Um, and it's, it's even useful later on in the game, so it's definitely one that's worth getting. Next is Frog Song from the Touch Me's, yes that is a character name, Toxic Frogs or Christopher, hello. Um, you get it from the Gongaga area, forests, or Temple of the Ancients, or Northern Cave. Basically causes, car, causes Sleep Owl or Frog on one opponent. It's one of the worst, but you need it for one <laughs> you of the You get a Sleepy Frog. <laughs> um, the next one is Death Sentence. Um, you can get this in the cave of the GI um, in the area from Cosmo Canyon. Uh, there are some other um, characters that have it later on in the game as well. Um, it's essentially casts a timer. But when the timer reaches zero, it casts death. Now, considering that death is a move you can get from Materia, death with a delay isn't really that useful. 
Next is Trine from the Materia Keeper boss or Godo boss. Um, we got ours in Mount Nibble. It's a lining damage that damages all opponents, so it's a great AoE ability to use. It's a great war ability. <laughs> AoE? AoE, what's that? Area of effect. Oh. God damn it. Oh, it's an AoE. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Thanks. Okay. Aero is an AoE. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, the next one we've got here is Death Force. You can learn it on the shore of Watai. Um, you do need to manipulate um, a Adamentai Manai? Adamant Amai. The big turtle thing. If you um, manipulate the big turtle thing and then you're going to get it to cast it on yourself, it essentially makes you immune to death, um, which is very handy for certain characters, especially in the final cave when you fight the gargoyles that cast level 5 death when they die. Um, this will help keep you alive, that's where I found I use it the most. So it is worth getting if you have any enemies that cast instant death on you. Next up is Magic Hammer, a great ability to try and get MP back from opponents or bosses in fact. Um, to get Magic Hammer, all you've got to do is manipulate the Razor Weeds. We found ours on the light grassy areas near the time. It's definitely a really good enemy skill. It can keep you maintaining magic points without having to use ethers and sleeping. So you can just keep going in those difficult areas where there's a long time between towns. It's really useful, definitely worth getting. The next one we've got here is Magic Breath. Uh, this can be learned in the Northern Cliffs. Uh, it can be learned from a Stilver or a Parasite. Um, essentially a creature that looks a bit like the Materia Keeper. It's a fire, ice and lightning damage on all opponents, so it's multiple types of elemental damage. It's a pretty powerful attack actually, so it's definitely worth getting one of the more powerful attacks you can learn. Next up is Bad Breath, learned from the Marlborough in Gaia's Cliffs, or the Northern Cave if you manage to find it. What Bad Breath does is essentially it casts all status ailments on you. Um, so obviously it doesn't work on bosses, but it's pretty devastating. Yeah, but see if you can go in with a ribbon to kind of, to kind of uh, stay away from it, cast every single status ailment in the game at once. Uh, next one we've got here is Goblin Punch. Uh, now you may be wondering what is Goblin Punch useful for? You get it from Goblin Island from a goblin, um, which you can reach once you have either a Chocobo or um, High Wind. It's just a standard damage attack, but it is quite useful if you've got a limit break ready and you don't want to use it just yet. So if you want to save your limit breaks, use Goblin Punch instead. It's like the equivalent of doing a normal attack. Next we have the move question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Learn we learned ours from the Behemoth in the Sector 8. Getting it from the Jersey, jersey in the Shinra Mansion is nigh on impossible. And what this does is it takes off the difference between your current health and your maximum health, so you want to really do it when you have very low HP. Right, the next enemy skill we've got here is Shadow Flare. You can learn this from old Teamer weapon when you fight him um, floating around different areas. Um, you can get it from a few other boss characters as well. This is the first one you will encounter where you can get it from. Uh, it's a really big non-elemental non -elemental damage on one opponent, so it's particularly useful on bosses. It's really high power, uh, but it's quite an expensive one in terms of MP, so save it for bosses this one, but definitely worth learning. Next up is Dragon Force. Not the band. Uh, learned from the Dark Dragon in the Northern Caves. Uh, this raises a defence and magic defence of one of your characters. I don't know if this is one is particularly powerful, so I don't think we really use it that much, but uh, you will have to manipulate the dragon to get it to cast on you, because it's a buffer. Mm. The next enemy skill is L5 Death. Uh, you can get this on the Northern Cave from Learn From Parasites. Uh, now, level 5 Death will deal death to any character that's level is a multiple of five. So it's not too good a move, there are other moves that just cast death straight away on anything, so it's particularly weak and fun I used it that often. Next up is Roulette, learned from the Death Dealer in the Northern Caves. This pronounces death on any one opponent or ally, so it's not 
not the best skill because you can kill your whole team. Yeah, I, I think we essentially got this just so we had the full set, but it's not a very good one. Um, as you can see, this is how it works. It will just select a character at random, and then that character will have death cast on them. The next one is again in Northern Cave, and it can be learned from uh, Pollen Salta. It's uh, Angel Whisper. Uh, Angel Whisper restores HP and status to any one ally. So it's similar to White Wind, but it's on one character at a time. The difference between this and White Wind is it'll actually give you full life when you cast it. Oh, it's a little angel. Next up is Pandora's Box, learned from the Dragon Zombie in the Northern Caves. You'll only cast this once. So, and this is incredibly hard to find. I think we spent 40 minutes trying to find this damn dragon zombie. It's quite a rare encounter. Um, it does do high damage on all opponents. It's probably one of the most powerful ones you get at that stage in the game. Um, but at that point, you're only really going to have the final boss battle to contend with. So, it's worth getting if you want to get the complete set. Again, by this point of the game, you'll probably have more powerful attacks out of your materia. Yeah, you should have better by this point. Thank you for watching our enemy skill guide, we hope you found it useful. For other Final Fantasy VII playthrough videos, please check out the YouTube channel and please subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.